This series will attempt to predict and provide a wish list for Frontier's upcoming game, Planet Zoo. The conditions and probability of animals chosen will follow a guideline explained at the beginning of the first video. Be sure to watch the previous videos of this series to keep up to date with the entire wish list and predictions. In a tight race with coastal, islands and wetlands, the savannah has edged out a narrow win. The savannah is a tropical grassland defined by widely spaced trees in which the canopies don't close like a forest. As a result, they are not as open as grasslands and shrublands, but they contain scattered trees, long grasses and a typical dry and warm weather. The savannah most renowned is obviously the African savannah, stretching from the sub-Saharan region called the Sahel, stretching around the Congo rainforest basin and continuing towards southern Africa. The other major savannah region is the South American Cerrado. First off, we will address some overlap with the animals currently confirmed that are expected to appear in the game. As of the upload date of this video, we still don't know the exact species of rhinoceros that will be in the game, but we have mentioned the white rhinoceros in our first video here. The black rhinoceros is the other African species with a strong shout for inclusion. Smaller and coloured darker than the former, the black rhinoceros is a browser, consuming twigs and leaves while its larger cousin, the white rhinoceros, primarily grazes. Historically, the black rhinoceros was numerous and had a very large distribution across Africa. Its adaptability to eating leaves allowed it to traverse into the rainforest of the Congo. Today, with three of its subspecies extinct, it is critically endangered, living in isolated pockets across southern and eastern Africa. Its horns are extremely lucrative in the Middle East and Asia. As a result, the biggest threat to its survival is poaching. Even if the black rhinoceros is not the primary rhinoceros species mentioned in Planet Zoo, it still pertains a highly likely chance to appear upon release or in DLC, as it is quite different enough to be considered unique. We are certain the game will feature the reticulated giraffe, but there is an interesting shout for the Maasai giraffe, which is arguably the more famous giraffe subspecies. The Maasai is the tallest and largest giraffe, which makes it the tallest land animal on earth, period. It can be distinguished with its skin patterning, which is much more irregular and jagged, often forming star shapes compared to the reticulated giraffe's polygonal and sharper patterns. I don't expect the Maasai giraffe to be added, and would be perfectly content with only one giraffe subspecies in the game, but the Maasai admittedly has somewhat of a possibility to be included alongside the reticulated. We have confirmation that the West African lion will be present in the game, and as a result there is almost no chance of any other lion subspecies appearing. The Asiatic lion nevertheless possesses an ever so slight chance because it is the only lion population outside of Africa. During antiquity, lions were found in all of Africa, the Middle East, India, even Mediterranean Europe. However, many of these populations are regionally extinct. The Asiatic lion had populations in Arabia known as the Arabian lion, but now exists solely in the Gur National Park of India. The major distinguishing feature is the less developed mane. Asiatic lions also have a fold of skin running along their belly. I personally think it is a quite an uphill battle for the Asiatic lion to make it into the game, but it is worth a mention. Also known as the painted dog or wolf, the African wild dog is one of the savannah's iconic mammalian predators, forming large, tight-knit communities and hunting as coordinated packs. Rather than using speed or powerful neck-breaking bites, the wild dog hunting strategy involves cornering prey in a chase of stamina and exhaustion. They actually have one of the highest predator success rates on the African savannah, higher than leopards, cheetahs and even lions, and this has been associated with their strong social bonds, teamwork and endurance. Nevertheless, they suffer from intense competition as other predators may use this to their advantage by stealing hard-earned kills. Furthermore, they are preyed upon by predators higher up the food chain. This, coupled with habitat loss, poaching and trapping, and diseases like rabies makes the African wild dog one of the more endangered savannah animals, and its distribution range has reduced in recent times to more scattered areas of the savannah. A common sighting in zoos, African wild dogs are an expected species to be in the game, considered a core and quintessential species of the savannah. The serval is a widespread species of cat inhabiting most of the savannah regions in Africa. Agile and stealthy, the serval lives a solitary life, hunting small prey. Its success has seen it conquer most of the continent, even emerging into the more arid North African Morocco. 
Even though it is considered of least concern, numbers have slowly been declining, and its range has began to restrict. For instance, servals are now very rare in South Africa and declared locally extinct there. Servals do not hunt livestock, however still get caught by farm traps. They also suffer from poaching for its skin and medicine, and recently a surge in demand on the pet trade. Unfortunately, their likeliness is doubtful as they are probably not unique enough. Alternatively, we have the Caracal. The Caracal's range is the most impressive of all wildcat species. The Caracal is more robust build compared to the slender Serval, distinguished by its dark, tufted ears. Due to its range, it inhabits many biomes including mountainous alpine regions, grasslands, shrublands, even arid semi-deserts. However, it is most notable over the African savanna, of which it prefers. Perhaps due to its secretive and solitary nature, the Caracal is often cited as an exotic animal. Unfortunately, this translates to threats towards it in regards to skin poaching and the pet trade. More unique than the Saval, the Caracal would have a better possibility of addition, although both species would compete against a surplus of wild cats such as lynxes, bobcats and the like. The olive baboon is arguably the most famous baboon species, and the most wide-ranging of them all. Preferring habitats with reasonable foliage density, they are common on the savannas but will venture into open woodlands and more thick forested areas, especially around the Congolese basin. Combined with their omnivorous diet and adaptability, it makes them one of the most successful of all the old world monkeys. Olive baboon troops are enormously large, consisting upwards of a hundred individuals, and poses a pest problem for farmers in its range. Its abundance means it is hardly at risk. Popular and common in zoos due to their inquisitiveness, use of tools and approachable nature, olive baboons are a likely addition. The Hamadryas is the other baboon species in contention, inhabiting both sides of the Red Sea in the southwestern Arabian Peninsula and the northern Horn of Africa. Males of the species display the recognizable silver cape and mane whilst reaching almost twice the size of females. Although foraging on the savannah, they live in family groups on rocky slopes and cliffs in secluded areas away from predators and humans. This exoticness combined with their distinctive appearance and the fact they are a fairly common presence in zoos suggests a likely candidate. However, both baboon species would be in competition for a slot. Our first savannah antelope is the Geronook, inhabiting areas in and around the Horn of Africa. Geronooks are extremely slender and have a distinctive long neck. One of their unique behaviours involves standing on its hind legs, stretching both its body and neck to reach trees and foliage. As a result, the Geronook is primarily a browser, and is found in more dense savanna areas. Nevertheless, the Geronook faces intense competition from a variety of gazelle and antelope savanna species, and its inclusion is unlikely. Hearts of Beast are another antelope species found in various pockets on the African savanna. The Red Hearts of Beast is so called for its darker tanned maroon colouring. Hearts of Beast in general are known for their exquisite and well developed horn growths that resemble curved daggers. The Red Hearts of Beast inhabit areas in the southern continent, whilst the endangered Swain's Hearts of Beast inhabits a small pocket in Ethiopian national parks. Compared to the red hartebeest, its horns separate wider and resemble sickles. Hartebeest are generally one of the more numerous herds on the savannah plains, forming herds of some 300 individuals at a time. Their distinct visibility against the savannah makes them easy targets for poaching and trophy hunting. Most hartebeest populations and subspecies are now dispersed with variable conservation statuses. Both the subspecies I've chosen today represent the more unique hartebeest varieties, but Still both would be unlikely. Elands are the next group of antelope we explore, with the common eland the most distributed of the genus throughout the savanna of southeastern Africa. The common eland features distinguishing spiral horns, as do other eland species, with a stocky and broad body plan reminiscent of wild cattle. Elands are therefore rather unique compared to the usual monotony of African savanna herding animals, but their populations are dramatically less dense compared to other varieties. The common eland would be an unlikely species, but the giant eland may be a different story. Considered vulnerable by the IUCN and dispersed in two major pockets in West and Central Africa, the giant eland is the largest antelope in the world, 
capable of growing to 3 meters in length and thus unusually a dangerous adversary to all but the strongest of lions. Their adaptability is much more diverse than the common eland, capable of grazing and browsing, living in a variety of biomes including deserts and savannas all the way up to the edges of thick rainforest. They are also a migratory species, moving to greener pastures as the seasons permit. With their typical eland spiral horns, thin striping patterns, crest of short black hair on their necks and a distinctive dewlap below it, giant elands have significantly more potential to be considered unique and thus a higher chance than the common eland of gracing the game's roster. I rate it a possible addition. Ostriches are the largest flightless birds in the world, preferring extensively open savanna plains of sub-Saharan Africa, but also venturing into the Sahel semi-arid desert regions. The reason they are able to live in dry environments well compared to other birds is that they are omnivorous, allowing them to intake much of their water content for ingesting plant matter. The ostrich is recorded as the fastest bipedal animal in the world, and thus uses its speed to its advantage when evading predators. The only real exception is the cheetah, which is the most prolific predator of the ostrich. As a quintessential savanna animal, the ostrich is an expected species. It serves as a popular attraction in zoos and is noted for its suitability to captivity. Ostriches in captivity can live up to 60 years of age, surpassing that of many bird species. The black crowned crane inhabits the Sahel regions of sub-Saharan Africa, preferring dry savanna to forage for insects and seeds but also requires wetland habitats to nest. As it cannot extract moisture from its food as efficiently as say the ostrich, the black crowned crane needs to be close to rivers and waterways, as such it is dependent on two interacting biomes that are quickly disappearing from its distribution range. Habitat degradation from farming and desertification has thus the two major threats to the crane that has rendered its status as vulnerable. Besides this, the black crowned crane is an ornate bird with striking features that make it exceptionally unique and aesthetically pleasing. It is a rather unknown bird species however and its lack of success in captive breeding programs somewhat makes it an unlikely addition. The greater kudu are another species of savanna antelope not unlike the hearter beast in regards to size, body plan and colouring. However, the horns adorned by the adult males are one of the most developed in the antelope family, resembling the antlers of deer in some regards. As a result, its horns are heavily prized in trophy hunting. Although encompassing a massive range, its populations are widely dispersed, and thus it occurs in lower numbers compared to other core populations of African herding animals. Surprisingly uncommon in zoos, the greater kudu would be much more well poised than other savanna herbivorous candidates we've covered thus far, but it still is only a possibility. Steenbok are smaller antelopes that are common on the savanna. They are generally unique in the regard that they tend to not herd, instead preferring to be solitary or in pairs except the breeding season. Another unique trait involves their reaction to predators. Instead of flight or fight response prevalent with other antelope varieties, Steenbok's first instincts are to hide using their low profile to their advantage. Only when predators approach closer that the steenbok breaks into zigzag running patterns to shake off pursuers. Too similar to gazelles, steenbok are not distinguishing enough on their own to warrant their own place and would struggle to make it into the game. The common or African warthog is a numerous pig species extensive over the African savanna, and the only one that is adapted to the less productive food source in this biome whereas its relatives generally inhabit more forested areas. Common warthogs contribute greatly as major food sources for the predators of the savanna, including the big cats, wild dogs and hyenas, even birds of prey, but often will fiercely defend themselves with their tusks if cornered. The warthog adds a different diverse element to the savanna biome, and it is a stalwart in many zoos and games, therefore it would be an expected animal for Planet Zoo. The secretary bird is a unique bird of prey with long legs, appearing like a mix between an eagle and a crane. The secretary bird is mostly terrestrial, preferring to run down prey with sheer speed rather than swooping in from the air. As such it draws comparisons to the old lineage of terror birds. An expert at hunting lizards and snakes, the bird is noted for its use of stomping its prey to death. Secretary birds have been rather successful in captivity, but in the wild they are now suffering from habitat degradation as they require trees to nest in. Although vulnerable, 
The secretary bird is highly respected, well protected, with an immense range contributing to stable populations. It is a likely species for the game, adding a mostly terrestrial bird of prey that is unique among the animal kingdom, and definitely adding something different for the game. Spotted hyenas are arguably the most iconic hyena varieties, and one of the quintessential savannah animals of Africa. Spotted or laughing hyenas are large and almost bear-like, characterised by their massive social circles, forming the largest packs of any carnivore. As a hunter and opportunistic scavenger, the spotted hyenas are the most successful carnivore on the continent, capable of digesting skin, bone, and other undesired parts, allowing them to maximise caloric intake for minimum effort. Their ability to hunt alone, in small packs, or even as large groups en masse, in a multitude of environments against varied prey choices makes them acutely adaptable and contributes to their wide-ranging success. They are most infamous for their piracy against African wild dogs, using their size to overrun carcasses. However, for the most part, they are quite capable hunters and willingly use their stamina to tire down prey in prolonged chases. The spotted hyena as a commonplace, classic savannah animal is an expected species and should be a core component of this biome. On the other hand, striped hyenas are equally as adaptable but struggle to compete on the savannah against the much larger spotted hyenas. Hence, they are often found in more diverse environments such as arid plains and deserts, as well as appearing outside the continent all the way into India, but their numbers are declining outside of Africa. The striped hyena is increasingly threatened due to its prey numbers dwindling and increasing competition from more effective hunters in its range. In recent history, its diet has increasingly encompassed seasonal fruits, for instance. Populations of this hyena are now patchy, but conservation efforts have been rather successful, and the animal is noted for its docile nature in captivity. Nevertheless, the striped hyena is an unlikely addition, as it is outclassed by its more famous and popular spotted cousin. Sable antelope are iconic species of southeastern Africa, adorning the longest and most curved horns of any antelope species on the continent. A particular subspecies, the giant sable antelope, has the greatest horn growth of them all, circling around towards their backs. This makes sable antelope in general lucrative poaching targets, and in recent history their range has been further and further restricted. Alas, the giant sable antelope is now considered critically endangered, existing in a small locality in Angola, although other sable subspecies are stable but low in numbers. Sable antelopes have a great chance of inclusion into the game, reinforced by their almost mythical popularity in zoos and their status as a symbolic animal of endangered antelope varieties in Africa. Inhabiting the Cerrado savanna of South America, giant armadillo feature bands that protect their body and act as pseudo-armor. They are equipped with large claws that are used to dig into termite mounds, their favorite food, but also into the ground to prey on ants, worms and other insects. However, giant armadillo are not well studied, and although inhabit a large recorded range, they are an extremely rare sighting. Due to the fact armadillo supply a large amount of meat, they are a prized source of protein for indigenous communities in the Amazon basin, whilst their exoticness has seen them captured for pet trades. Giant armadillos do not survive well in captivity, however, and conservation efforts have struggled in this regard, with only one zoo in the world able to exhibit this creature. Its rarity actually excels its likelihood of appearance, its unique and exotic status would make an appealing and sought after animal. Bat-eared foxes are unique small fox species appearing in two populations on the African savannah. From their namesake, their distinctiveness derives from their pronounced bat ears, used for thermoregulation but also contributing to their acute sense of hearing, in which they use to hunt termites, their primary diet. Highly social animals, bat-eared foxes seek out termite mounds by listening to vibrations in the ground before raiding it as a group. The foxes are considered beneficial to the ecosystem as they control the termite population which are otherwise considered pests. Despite a lower occurrence compared to other canid varieties, bat-eared foxes aren't in any real conservation danger. Furthermore, their niche somewhat overlaps with the desert-dwelling fennec fox because of this, they are ranked as an unlikely addition, even with the fact they appear in many zoos worldwide. Springbok are an antelope species restricted to the southwestern African continent. 
They are named for their tendency to spring in the air in a maneuver called pronking or stotting. Although the exact nature of this behavior is unknown, it is believed to be an early warning system used against predators or performed as play by immature animals. Springbok are actually one of the few antelope species with an expanding population, regardless of their restricted range. Adopted as the national symbol of South Africa, Springbok are one of the more noteworthy African savanna antelope, with multiple examples in captivity and perhaps a possible inclusion for the roster. The aardvark is an insectivorous burrowing mammal found extensively over Africa. Wherever there is non-rocky soil and a presence of ants and termites, aardvark are sure to be around. As nocturnal creatures, they spend most of their day in burrows before venturing out at night and foraging over an immense home range. Their secretive and nocturnal nature makes it difficult to spot and study the animal, and as such, it is not considered common in numbers, but sufficient enough over its entire distribution to be considered of low concern. Aardvarks, however, do well in captivity, famous for being part of the roster of the first zoo ever, the London Zoo. They are generally a popular and appreciated animal that would prove likely to be added into Planet Zoo. A member of the mongoose family, meerkats are highly sociable burrowing animals living in extensive underground colonies. A trait unique to meerkats is their resistance to certain types of venom, allowing them to hunt and eat spiders, scorpions and snakes, among many other prey items that result in their adaptability. Meerkats are almost universally adored as a core composition of all zoos due to their intricate system of underground tunnels, their behavior of centering above ground, and their tolerance of humans in general. The meerkat is an immense favorite with the community and expected feature for the game. One of the quintessential savanna animals, the cheetah is renowned as the king of speed, the fastest land animal, utilizing a slender and streamlined body allowing explosive acceleration and the ability to quickly change direction whilst moving to catch prey. It is however a sprinter and does not continue into a prolonged stamina chase. The cheetah was once prevalent over Africa and Asia, where it inhabited the open savanna and grasslands that allowed it to employ its speed. Today, the cheetah suffers the most from habitat loss, as it requires an extensive home range to hunt in, which has resulted in its African population steadily restricted. It is predicted that Sahel region populations in North and Central Africa will disappear in the near future. In Asia, the case is worse, as the cheetah is now restricted to an isolated zone in Iran, and possibly Afghanistan. The cheetah is nevertheless considered a front runner for any zoo game and as part of the big free cats of the savannah, an expected inclusion. The Ard Wolf is one of the smaller members of the hyena family, but instead of subsisting on red meat, they are insectivorous with termites and ants their primary prey. A slender muzzle equipped with a tensile sticky tongue allows it to penetrate termite mounds and ants nests during the night whilst they escape into burrows to rest during the day, not unlike the lifestyle of the aardvark, and perhaps why they got their first half of their name. Aardwolf populations are measured as very uncommon throughout their range, as they are heavily dependent on their food source, but currently have little conservation fears. On the other hand, aardwolf settle in captivity decently and are a common sighting in zoos, perhaps a possible alternative for a small savanna insectivore compared to the bat-eared fox. The leopard is the most versatile, adaptable and distributed of the big cats, inhabiting a vast range from Africa into Asia. The African leopard is the most famous subspecies, living in the savanna plains but also venturing into the tropical rainforests of the Congo Basin. Unfortunately, the leopard is intensively persecuted for trophy hunting and as a viable threat to livestock. Further competition with the other big cats means leopards' populations are extremely scattered and fragmented. The African leopard is still the most common out of all leopard subspecies and the least threatened, at only vulnerable. Unlike the other big cats, leopards are famous for climbing trees from where they rest, store killed carcasses and scan their horizons. Extremely adaptable, they employ a more hide and stalk method to hunt a diverse set of prey, different from the sheer speed of the cheetah or the power pride tactics of the lion. Leopards along with lions are probably the most common big cat in captivity and no doubt an expected species. We will cover some more subspecies in future episodes depending on their biomes. 
Impala are one of the most famous antelope species, as one of the few that have retained most of their historical extent and readily appearing in many zoos worldwide. The horns of the Impala are reminiscent of gazelles and they also share a similar body plan. A distinctive trait is their large omnidirectional ears, in which it is their main defensive tool used against predators. Impala are a crucial food source for southern African predators, especially the cheetah and the leopard, appearing in small groups interweaved with herds of gazelles, zebras, wildebeest and other antelope. Impala are a likely addition due to public recognition and may prove to be one of the core savannah herding animals added to the game. Listed as the world's most fearless animal, the ratel, or better known as the honey badger, is an aggressive member of the weasel family. It is also fairly successful, inhabiting a range stretching from most of sub-Saharan Africa to Arabia and the Indian subcontinent. Capable of using tools, foraging for food any time of day, and with one of the least selective diets, ratels can eat anything from frogs to spiders to berries and roots. Another factor to their success is their ability to avoid predation by combative ferocity. They are even known to repel lions and other large predators on the savanna. Their distinctive bad odour is another deterrent. Honey badgers are often difficult to keep in captivity and although examples of breeding have been successful, their temperament against humans makes them high maintenance and even dangerous animals for zoos. An interesting creature but ultimately unlikely as it is somewhat undesirable with far better alternatives from the weasel family. That ends our predictions and wish list for these biomes. Vote in the poll for the next biome selection and subscribe for the next video as we await the release of Planet Zoo. Catch you guys later.